we can all agree it was a great night of fights. Uh, we actually had 10 first round finishes tonight, which is second all time in UFC history to the 11 that were recorded last November during uh, Rockhold versus Houston. So congratulations to all these fighters and everybody who fought tonight. This was a tremendous card, one of the best I've seen. Um, the attendance tonight was 6,231. Uh, the gate was 621,523. Fight of the night goes to Ortega versus Tavares. Yeah! yeah. And then we have two performances of the night. Yeah! Yeah! We did it, baby! That's what's up! Yeah, yeah Brian. Dang! So, we didn't get the submission, and people say, man, Brian, we're T-City, you're supposed to get triangle, you're supposed to finish the triangle. You guys. Chavo Tabata is no joke on the ground. He's a black belt. It's like me and Brian's guard, okay? And I slip every once in a while, he catches me, we're not gonna lie. But for the most part, I'm able to neutralize the man right here. No so submission. We, we didn't get the submission, but we got heart. TKO, baby. Like my dad says. Heart Coach the James, right, Coach James job, right here, man, Good putting job. in the Good mid job. work. <laughs> Brian, put in his time. And uh, tell us about that last round. Obviously, in the judges' scorecard, you were down for the first two rounds, but. In my mind, if it's street fight, his face was literally cut open like he just. Oh, it's done, man. It's done. Yeah, it's done. It's worst cut. Like his he whole... was bleeding in my mouth. I was swallowing it. It was. Oh. <laughs> they don't mean that part, bro. Sorry. <laughs> so the guy cuts him open, and I don't think some people knew. There was one spinning back elbow that landed standing up, almost knocked him out. Then most of the damage was done from where? The bottom of the guard. <laughs> the the guard so, so we're here. Show us what your mindset is right so here. So he's coming forward. Because he had great he was, hitting, he was hitting me. Boom. He was landing. <gasps> I was trying to cover. And then when he would hit with this, Boom. he would come here. Boom. 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 And that's when they landed. Boom. So this is not a very normal thing that we see in MMA and UFC where people are able to do more damage from their back than from the top of the fight. This is not the customary way. But it's the T-City way, and uh, it's interesting because that's the well, Gracie that's way. This is Gracie Jiu-Jitsu yeah. 101 way Jiu back. My grandfather against Fred Ebert way back when. Same elbows from the guard. Fred Ebert's whole face swollen shut, and my grandfather no bruises. So, same idea. The man did it, bro. We couldn't be more proud. And uh, even though we couldn't get that submission, that last round, we came in. We knew we were down on the judge's scorecard. Not on our scorecard. Not on our scorecard. On the judge's scorecard. We were down 2-0. And um, then what went through your mind at that last break in the round? Man, I looked at James, I looked at Hanner, and uh, I felt fresh in the third round. I felt that he blew his load in the first two rounds, and he was trying to take me down in the third round, but he couldn't. And um, I, felt, I felt fresher, so I started going for some hits, some strikes, and uh, this is what we said, this guy's going to go crazy, crazy, he's going to slow down. We knew it. And that's our chance, and we took advantage of it. He caught me in the private one time, you know, hit me really bad, hurt me really bad. And, and he went and sat down in the corner. And he saw sat him. down in the corner, and I was like, wait a minute, I'm not going to let this guy rest. I'm hurting, <laughs> but he's resting. I'm, I'm like, like, right, let's go. So I said, all right, you know what? He's hurting more than I'm hurting. So we just, I said, you know what, let's do this. I looked at Hannah, I looked at James, and they're like, one minute, man. And I said, you know what, hey. It's bang. It's like Vegas, baby. All in, baby, all in. That last minute was just all in. Threw a bunch of strikes and just gave it all I had. And it paid off, it went good. And that is the one aspect that I tell Brian. I say, Brian, we teach you what to do in worst case scenarios. We teach you how to elbow from the bottom of the guard, how to submit from bad positions, how to escape the mount. Back door escape. Back door escape. Show me that one, show me that one. I say, Brian, we teach you all these techniques for worst case scenarios, but you have a gift and that is the heart that we can't teach you, that it can't be replicated, no one else can have, and it only counts deep into the rounds when everyone's exhausted, one round left, one minute left, and you bring 100%, and uh, couldn't be more proud. So the guy mounted, he had you for a second, you closed the distance once, you I hugged his body, once, boom, he sat back, you hugged his body, Bro. great distance control, Gracie combative, lesson number one, slice number three, number two, punch block variation, you kept him, couldn't hit you at this point, right? Yeah, and then no. finally, when he started to go, then you did it again, boom, boom. boom. your hip thrust, boom. Boom. boom, you boom. come up with a leg right there, boom, so try to foot lock. Yeah, but typically, yeah, jiu-jitsu guy, yeah, no, 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 you succeeded because you got out of the mount. Yes. Okay, so typically, footlocks against jiu-jitsu, black belt, high-level guys, they'll let the ankle go. Because they've been caught so many times that in their mind, an ankle can break, and they can keep fighting, you know? They're not going to lose the championship, they're not going to lose a big fight, they're not going to lose a paycheck because of this. They'll lose it for this, they'll lose it for this, but this one will heal in six to eight weeks. So they let it rip, and that's where he was at. I don't know if it ripped or not, but he felt it, we rolled the bunch, boom, 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 big boy, he slipped out, Brian got up. Back to the boom. He was able to take you down a couple times in the first couple rounds, but in the third round, he wasn't able to take you down. And that's when you really knew you had him. Yeah. James, what do you think, coach? 
think you did really good, Don. I'm proud of you. Damn. Yeah, yeah. your hands, you know, he was, he was a lot higher than you were. That's why yeah. he, you noticed that, right? We do our conditioning. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we do our conditioning. Yeah. Short, no, short notice fight, but I'm always getting worked by this guy. Man. No matter what they did, yeah. no fight, fight. That's Every true. day he calls me up. Yeah. Yo, get your butt to work. So Ryan adopted the jiu-jitsu lifestyle 12, 13 years old and uh, it's paying off big time for this guy. He's, uh, we couldn't be more proud of him, not just because of what he does in the octagon, but what he does outside of the octagon. Yes. A lot of people don't know his story, but uh, it was quite a rough path in the early years there and we couldn't be happier that he was able to break free from the wrong influences and pursue a life of martial arts, discipline, respect and an amazing leadership. Uh, amongst the community of all the students of the Gracie Academy. They're all very proud of him, equally as proud as we are. And uh, man, this is just the beginning for this guy. On the mat, off the mat, it's, uh, it's a life that I don't think he's going to go back the other way. Much respect, brother. Couldn't be happier. Yeah. You guys, you down. All right. Oh, and don't forget what you do for my Riola. My Riola. That's what's up. Yeah. We hope you get out, baby. June, June, next weekend. Sorry, I'm not doing the thing right now. Saturday. We're having the grind and take a surf experience day to help out all the kids. If you're from the South Bay, come to Manhattan Beach, come surf with all the professional surfers. Come visit see all the little kids, visit them, surf with them. That's what I'm talking about. Your black belt on the mat and in life. Let's do it, guys. Oh. Oh.